Evening and all. Here we are at the house. And we're going to discuss the circuit that I used to test the MC6821P by programming port A and port B as outputs using the PIC16F877A. Now here's port B, RB0 to RB7, and I'm using that as the data bus for the MC6821P. As a buffer, we have a CD74HCT245E, that is a bi-directional IC. When 19 is low, the outputs are enabled. When pin 1 direction is high, data flows from the A side, A1 through A8, to the B side, B1 through B8. And I have port B of the PIC16F877A connected to the A side of the 74HCT245. The B side is connected to the data bus of the MC6821P. Now, continuing on with this IC, if 19 is low, that's your outputs and enables, and the direction pin, pin 1, is low, data flows from the B side to the A side. It's a bi-directional octal. I see. Very nice. Octal meaning 8. Right now, from the program, RC1 is connected. This is uh, port C of the PIC16F877. RC1 is connected to the direction pin, and I have it set high from the program. RC0, that is our output enable, RC0 is connected to the output enable. So for the data bits, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 35, 34, 33 of port B, they're connected to 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The B side of the 74 ACT 245, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, and 11 is connected to 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and 33. RC1, pin 16, is connected to pin 1, direction of the 74 ACT 245. RC0, 15, is connected to 19, the output enable, G bar. When G bar is low, we have data transfer. When G bar is high, we're in tri state. Now, down here on the MC6821P, pin 34 is reset. That's connected to port E1, pin 9, on the PIC16F877A. So we have port E1, pin 9, connected to 34, which is reset bar. Port E0, pin 8, is connected to pin 21. That is read slash write bar on the MC6821P. Now here's our chip selects. We have chip select 1 on pin 24. I got it tied up to pin, uh, uh, I got it tied up to 5 volts DC. Chip select 2, bar, the bar meaning it's active low. I got that on pin 23 tied to ground. And chip select 0 on 22, I got it connected to pin 4, which is port A2 on the PIC16F877A. 
Now here are the register selects, RS1 and RS0. RS1 on pin 35 of the MC6821P, RS0 on pin 36. So port A1 of the PIC 16F877 pin 3 is tied to pin 35, RS1. And port A0, pin 2, is connected to pin 36, RS0. That's the fun part. <laughs> That's the moving part. The part that does all the work. Now, we'll move to the next page and discuss it. Here on pin 25 of the MC6821P is the E-clock input. This sets up the timing inside that IC in reference to the MC6802 or M6809 microprocessor. But since the PIC16F877A does not have an E-clock output, I generate that square wave from this NE555N in a stable mode of operation. The output pin 3 goes to the input of the Schmidt trigger on pin 1, SN74HC14N, and the output pin 2 goes to the E clock input, the E pulse input 25. Here's port A of the MC6821P. Port A7 through port A0 are on pins 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, and 2. And they drive into the ULN2803A input side on pins 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Those are the base inputs. Now I show inverters here, but they are actually Darlington transistors in each circuit. So this would be a base input, a base input, and a base input, so on down. Down here connected to ground are all of the emitters. That's why this is labeled E. This is not to be confused with the E clock on the MC. 6821P. This is not the same as that E clock. This is label E because it's the emitters of all of those Darlington transistors. So you have to tie that back to power supply ground 9. Otherwise that circuit won't work. Now the common side, this is not common in the sense that we're used to hearing. This is the common cathode of all of the freewheeling diodes inside that I see. So you would not use this unless these were inductive loads and LEDs and resistors are not inductive loads so that's no connection. Now the output of each Darlington transistor would be labeled C. So here we have on pin 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, all collector outputs of the Darlington transistors inside this IC. The cathodes of the LEDs are tied to the collectors of those Darlington transistors. And on the other side, we have a 220 ohm current limiting resistor on each LED circuit tied up to 5 volts DC. So when we have 5 volts in to the base of that circuit, the Darlington transistor goes into saturation to E and current flows through the 220 ohm current limiting resistor through the anode cathode junction of the LED through the collector emitter junction turning on that LED. Let's go look at the port B side of the MC6821P and you'll see it's the same 
except that we have different pinouts from A to B. All the same. Now port B7 through port B0 are on 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, and 10 of the MC6821P. Now for the power supply section. Are we still in the frame? We might have to go down and back up just a hair. There we go. I think we're there. From an external power supply, VDCN, to pin 1 of the 78M05. This is L78M05CV. The output of this three-terminal voltage regulator is 5 volts. I have some filter capacitors here. I have 470 microfarad, 16 volt on the input side of the L78M05CV. On the output side, I have a 47 microfarad, 16 volt electrolytic capacitor. And that filters the input and filters the output. Now sometimes you'll see like a 0.01 or a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor right here. And uh, some data sheets say that that's required, but I've generally found that on a breadboarded circuit I can leave those ceramic capacitors off of the input and output side. But if you were to permanently put this circuit on a, uh, a circuit board, you will want to add those extra filtering capacitors. Over here, let's start here with the PIC 16 f 877 a its voltage requirements. Here's the master clear pin on pin 1. I tie that up to 5 volts. There's two VDD pins and two VSS pins. 11 and 32 for VDD that gets tied up to 5 volts DC this 5 volts DC right here the VSS pins 12 and 31 get tied to power supply ground down here is the MC6821P pin 20 is VCC that gets tied up to 5 volts DC VSS pin 1 ground gets tied back to power supply ground. The NE555N pin 8 is VCC that gets tied up to 5 volts DC, this 5 volts DC over here, and ground on pin 1, the same ground as the power supply. The two ULN 2803A here and here that drive the LED circuitry from port A and port B of the MC6821P. The emitter pins, pin 9, must be tied to power supply ground. Right here is the 20 megahertz clock for pin 13 clock in of the PIC 16F877A. Pin 14 of the clock is plus 5 volts DC. Pin 7 of the clock is ground. And pin 8 is the clock output into pin 13 clock input. Well, I think that's everything. If I miss something, I'll come back to it. <laughs> All right. All right, folks. There you go. The next video will be about the code to make this circuit perform the function that we saw in the first video, part one. So that was part one. This is part two. Part three 
is showing you the code, the program inside the PIC 16F H77A. All right, all. Thank you very much for watching. I'm always grateful for y'all coming over and uh, seeing what we're working on next. It's fascinating every now and then, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. All right. I got to go outside and uh, put some water on those basil and chives back there. They're drying up. We'll see you next time.